Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and welcome to Board Game Inquisition, where we're here to offer you insight and information about the board games you might want to have in your collection. So how do you feel about dueling against your friends, casting spells, blockading their moves, refining crystals and coming out the ultimate victor? Well if so, here's five things I think you need to know about the Trial of the Temples. Thing one, what's this game all about? Now, Trial of the Temples does have a theme, it just doesn't feel like a particularly important one. So the story goes that once a year the mages gather at the mages arena and there they partake in three trials to determine who will become the supreme master. Who will win and receive the ultimate title? So this game really echoes another game from M4S4 Publisher and that of course would be Mystery of the Temples, which is also a game about gathering resources, traveling around in a circle in a kind of race. However, this is a clearly more robust take on this. As a whole, the idea of battling mages isn't the most inventive theme, but I think the way it's handled here feels different than most games. Thing two, mechanics. This is a game about gathering resources and adapting them to the challenge at hand. You'll start the game with three pieces in the centre and they are the trials and you're going to want to go up the tracks or in these um, to get victory points. Around them are placed the 12 temples and this is where you'll get resources to move up the various tracks. At the start of the game you're going to place out your wizard on one of these temples so that you can get various kind of resources that you might need. Now what happens is you'll definitely gain the resources on whatever tile you place your wizard however you will also get everything that nobody's on on the left hand side and the right hand side of you up until a point where you run into someone else's marker or the day and night divider and I'll talk more about that later. Um, so as you can see this could be really really cutthroat depending on how close or far away someone wants to get to you and you could end up with a lot or a little resources. So now that you've got kind of your gems and crystals you move on to the second phase um, and this is where you're going to attempt to move up the tracks um, on in the trials and they will require specific things like a blue and a purple gem and you'll need to have those in an action token to be able to use them. Now you get victory points as you go up these tracks and you'll often get bonuses as well like power cubes. The interesting part is that everyone is trying to go up the same tracks at the same time and you're able to hop over other players which is a good thing if you can you know, plan ahead and perhaps gain an advantage. Now, the power cubes I just talked about go on your player mat, which we haven't really mentioned yet. So everybody has a player mat um, and on it, there is an entire section of kind of unlocks you can use your power cubes for. And these can be such things like whenever you get a red crystal, you can get an additional one. Some of them are bonuses you'll get straight away. Some of them kind of end game scoring. And the more of these cubes you have out, the more likely you are to get victory points, but you do need to have them in particular patterns. The other thing your board takes care of is your mana bar. Um, and your mana bar basically is kind of like a universal good. Um, it allows you to purchase other items. And how you get mana, well, that also comes from the temples, but you're not allowed to keep your resources between rounds. So everything you don't use gets turned back into mana. Your player board also gives you a unique starting um, hand of items um, and everyone gets one of those. And I think that's kind of a nice touch to, to keep the game different. The game ends when two people have reached the top of either of the trial tracks that are in the center of the board. Um, you've run out of power cubes or you've managed to flick through the last of the trial tokens. Um, and these keep track of the rounds in between the games. So the game then is limited. They also determine this day and night thing I mentioned earlier, which means the board flips as you play. Each, each temple has a day and a night side. And at the start of each round, you'll flip this and it will tell you exactly how many of them will go to the nighttime side. This keeps the game really fresh and really interesting as it changes as you go around. And it's a very clever kind of mechanical thought. 
on a whole I love how all of this fits together it you know it feels very seamless and it makes sense in how everything is connected the thing to note however is that this game is ruthless absolutely ruthless in particular when you're trying to get resources you really could be very mean to somebody um, and also the fact that you can't keep your resources between turns prevents kind of you know kind of turtling up and thinking at five turns ahead you really can only focus on the here and now thing three What's this game like on the table? Well, Trials in the Temples is really easy to set up and I think that's in part because it comes just with these kind of giant cardboard pieces and you fit them together and set them down. Um, not only that, but it doesn't take up a lot of space on the table either, despite looking, you know, quite large. It's very compact, really. Um, the rule book that came with it is pretty great and it didn't take as long to get started playing. For two of us it takes about 40 minutes to play and that's with the special two player rules where you have dummy mages trying to go up on the trials. Um, now the replayability here is something kind of special and this is to do with this day and night track kind of that the, the temples have. And what this means is that the start of each round you'll flip over a tile and it will tell you how many temples will go into the night time. Um, each card, each, I want to say card, but each piece of cardboard um, has a day and a night side for the temples um, and they're stunningly purely by the way and they will make, give you or produce different resources on each side um, so the board is forever changing and then the ones that were on the night side the turn before turn back to daytime afterwards so it's like a clock moving around the board mm, it's a very clever idea it keeps the board fresh and exciting all of the time thing four aesthetics of all of the good looking games I own that get to the table, this is right up there with them. Everything about this game is stellar. Um, I think there's something very interesting about the shape of it because it's a circular board with circular pieces around it. Um, it's very enticing, um, it's very interesting to look at and it's very tactile too. Um, the component quality here is pretty great. I love the big chunky pieces of cardboard for the tiles, which is a real step up from Mystery of the Temples. And all of the addition of these kind of colored cubes and colored gems and stuff really adds an element of whimsy and kind of delight. Um, and while I think the theme in this game isn't particularly strong, I do think the art choices are. Everything in here just fits so well together and really evokes kind of glee and fun and awe at all of these magical feats. Like you need only look at the temples that are around the board, they're stunning. And then you flip them over to the nighttime side and they get even more gorgeous. Everything about this game says, touch me, play with me, look at me. Thing five, is this game actually any good? Well, despite it being very similar to Mystery of the Temples, um, another title from the same company. Trial of the Temples does really stand out on its own two feet here. It's a very attractive and appealing game. It's easy to learn, it's easy to set up, it doesn't take particularly long to play, it's fun and I always felt like I just wanted to play one more game when we finished and I, I think that's a great testimony to be able to say. However, I don't know how um, how appealing or easy it'll be for new players to get to grips with. Um, despite it not feeling like an overly complicated game, there is a lot going on. And that first go or that first attempt at it isn't necessarily going to be smooth sailing. However, once you do get over that kind of thing, everything fits together really, really well. And it's obvious how the game is working. So if you are interested in this and you're worried it might be a little on the rough side, Give it a go, a go, maybe two, and you'd be surprised what you'll come out with at the other end. Um, the other thing I really like about this game is the fact that you can't plan too far ahead. You lose your resources at the end of each round. The board where you get resources from changes every turn. And as people move up the tracks um, in the trials, I keep wanting to say temple, in the trials, um, that'll change where you want to go to and the goods you'll need. Um, and for someone like myself who doesn't like planning too far ahead, who likes living in the now and kind of doing what the game asks of me, this is fantastic. I, lo I love that it cut off other people's kind of in-depth strategies and rather you really do have to deal with the problems you're given right away. Um, on a whole, this is a really fun, bright, colourful game um, that fits together really nicely and is quite satisfying to play. Um, and it's one that gives you an unusual puzzle and how you solve that really is entirely up to you. Do I think you should have Trial of the Temples in your collection? 
Well, to me, it seems to be the sort of game that's aimed at people who like giving the game what it wants, who don't mind working towards, you know, specific goals. Um, also for people who enjoy something beautiful and enchanting to have set up on their table. And then, of course, for the people who like competing with their friends and determining who is the victor. On a whole, if you've enjoyed some of the other Emperor S4 titles like I have, then you really should be going and checking this out. And it's going to be released at this Eshton Spiel 2019. You've been watching Board Game Inquisition. If you want to know when my next videos are released, why not like or subscribe to the channel? Or if you've got any comments or queries you'd like to make about Trial of the Temples, why not leave them in the comment box below? I really like hearing from people. It like totally makes my day. And until next time, I'll be here playing games, asking questions, and of course, perusing my collection. Take care, everybody.